Hey, what's up, fam? Thank y'all for tuning in once again. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know about it. So the Democrats are coming to the defense of Vice President Kamala Harris because she has no policies. Like you go onto her website, all the first thing you see is a page asking for donations. That's it. There are no policies, not saying what she stands for, none of that at all. So we have, we, the people have a problem with that because we don't know what we want to know. What policies are you going to try to adhere to that will help the American people, especially in the realms of economy and, 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 and the border crisis and the illegal immigration crisis. What are you going to do about those? What are you doing about those? And why should we vote for you in the first place? So let's just get to the story. This is from Yahoo.com by way of The Hill. And it says, Democrats defend Harris for avoiding policy. Why would you be avoiding policy? It says, Democrats are defending Vice President Harris for not diving too far into policy during her condensed campaign. Arguing the short timeline lends itself to a focus on broad themes. The Democratic National Convention focus on topics from freedom to patriotism was heavily on biography and history and emphasized building on the on the momentum behind Harris's campaign. Like they said, this is like a honeymoon phase. Papa Biden dropped out and then here comes Kamala and now everybody's happy. Everybody's in an uproar. All the Democrats gets a, 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 a like, like, like a burst of energy saying that this is it, good things are happening. And all she says is, we gotta keep democracy going. We got You gotta vote for me in order to preserve democracy. When in fact, the way she got the nomination had nothing to do with democracy at all. No one voted for her. No one was able to go against her and debate to see who the best candidate would be. They just said, hey, she's a vice president. We ain't got much time. She is it. Not sure where they do that at. The demo, uh, let's say, but Harris has faced criticism for how light it was on policy specifics. Democrats argue she can afford not to get too far into the weeds on policy because Americans want to hear about her priorities. Exactly. That wouldn't it be like the same thing? Priorities and the what? What's the priority of your policies or your policy of priorities would be? Would your priority be to cut inflation? If so, how would you do that? It don't take you. It shouldn't take. You are already in office. You've been in politics for pretty much all of your adult life. You have people on your team. You have people surrounding you around the clock. There is no reason in the world why you should not be able to hash out policies and bring them to the people overnight. Because a lot of this stuff should already be in place, if you think about it. If, if she has to come up with a bunch of new policies and a bunch of new things to talk about, then it's not in her heart. She ain't thought about it. So... That's why it's not there. And that's why I've said many times, and I will say it again, I don't trust and will not vote for Kamala Harris. Because even, oh, 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 just to remember, just a reminder, Joe Biden is still president. For those of y'all who may have forgot, who think that Kamala's a president now, that we don't have a president between now and January for the next four months. Three months, three months, four months, four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Next four months, Joe Biden is still the president of the United States. Do not forget that. But anyway, you are, she is in office. She already has access to everything she needs. So like I said, even if they would come out now and give reparations, even if they would come out now and somehow reduce and cut inflation, you know, cut, make sure the interest rates are cut, boot out all the migrants, build a border wall. If they did all this in four months, give, like I said, give reparations in the form of cash payments, 
I still would not vote for them. I go back to the story of the two plus billion dollars they gave to all the black and minority farmers of color. And I said that that should not be enough for a vote. Matter of fact, I might have to go back and do a video on this and go in depth. That, but that should not be enough for a vote because in the studies, it shows that really black American farmers have been shorted. I think it was 350 something billion dollars. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I don't know if it's still, if it's still up real. Yeah, not there, not there, not there. Let's see. I'm trying to find something good. No, I don't. Here, oh, here, 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 here go. $2.2 billion they're giving to the black farmers. Because I, I did a video on this other day. Well, I, I did. This was part of one of my videos, which I should have did. A whole dang on me. 300. Yeah. When you, It says right here. Through, throughout the 20th century, this is a 20. This is just the 20th century. Throughout the 20th century, black farmers lost an estimated of 326 billion dollars worth of land due to discriminatory lending practices from the USDA and the forced sale of black-owned land, according to a 2022 analysis by the New Republic. 326 billion dollars. But y'all are happy because they gave you $2.2 billion. $2.2 billion is not enough money for my vote. Thank you. I'll take the check. But you're not even scratching the surface. So like I said, you it, if you start to do something for us, still ain't got my vote. My thing is you need complete, total reparation, restoration of the people. Then we can talk about it. Then we can talk about it. It says that we are actually in the final stages of a campaign. We're both at the beginning and the final stages. So policy pages are for spring. Voters want to know what direction y'all are going. You're going, said Senator Brian Schatz, Democrat of Hawaii, who told reporters at the Capitol this week. Trump got policies on his website. Yep. Got, what is it, the 40, what is it, policy 47 or something like that? He got policies on his website. And Trump's not a politician. But he got people around him who are, he helped, you know what I'm saying? He coming with ideas and it helped create a policy. Just have one Kamala or Kamala, how you say her name? I remember Kamala because that was like a one of my like favorite wrestlers back in the day. Kamala, the Ugandan warrior. You remember that back in the day for those of you who grew up on uh, WWE and World Class Championship Wrestling and, you know, back when there was territory before WWE took it over and just destroyed it all. Yeah. I truly think it's more it's more honest to the voters to say, here are 10 things I'm going to work on than to engage in false precision and post a 700 page document with legislative text all done because the truth of it is good presidents do what Biden did, for instance, and say, I want to do an infrastructure bill. You guys figure it out and I'll sign it. Now I'm feeling conflicted because it seems like what's being said is contradicted to itself. It's too broad to do policy, okay. But yet, no one said you had to create a policy and say it'll be done and ten and be done the first day in office or the first month of office. No one said that. No one said come out with seven hundred pages. What the what? Cause see, the thing about voters, the majority of us are not politicians. The majority of us aren't lawyers. So the majority of us don't know anything about law at all. So really, you remember how they said Donald Trump, one of the ways he became president because he spoke to Americans on a fifth grade level and first people got offended. But then when studies show that the majority of the people only read on a, or understand, have an understandable fifth grade level when it comes to education and reading, then no one really, no one really had nothing to say. Break it down to everybody at a fifth grade level, vice president. That's all you got to do. Just like you say, uh, I'm for women's productive rights, reproductive rights. Yeah, all the women clapping and they cheering. Uh, and I'm for pro democracy. Yeah, you see how you see how easy that was, how simple that was. 
you have to say, well, this is what I'm going to do for reproductive rights. People kind of get the hint of what you're talking about. So you had to go real in detail in it. So you ain't got to really go in detail with the majority of American people. So this really is you saying people are dumb by telling them that they dumb without telling them that they dumb. It's what this is, is what I'm reading so far. No one said they want to see 700 pages of nothing. If that's the case, because hell, you know, they didn't read no, none, none of these Democratic people or these voters read the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, what is it called? The plan 2020? The, 20, the, the 2025 proposition? What the hell do you call it? Hell, I don't know. Project 2025. Yeah, I'm getting brain farts right quick. Yeah, I'm because I'm quite sure nobody read Project 2025. So you know damn well they ain't finna read no 700 pages. Stop playing people for a fool. The job of the chief executive is to set, and then say, I just want I want a bill. You guys figure it out and I'll sign it. Okay. That's that's very disheartening. The job of the chief executive is to set national priorities to work with the legislature and figure out what the market will bear. Shats continue. This idea that we're supposed to post bills as if they are all fi in final form is for 12 people who run podcasts. Again, nobody said create bills and post bills as if they're final. We want to know what policies are you going to go after? Period. That is it. You start with the idea. You tell us what you're for, what you're going to do for us. And now we put you in office. Now go do it. See, the problem Kamala Harris has. Well, no, actually she doesn't because, again, Joe Biden is still a president. So it's not really her problem. This would be a problem that Trump would have. That you would have voting for Trump is he can promise things and then get in office and do nothing because he's going to serve one term. But Kamala also kind of has this problem because Kamala Harris, you are in office right now as a vice president. And a lot of times people try to say that she's vice president, her hands are tied, she can't do anything. But it's funny because Joe Biden done told us that Kamala Harris has been the deciding vote for a lot of bills. A lot of things. She's been the deciding vote. So it's not like she don't have power. It's not like she don't have a voice. She can say something. Hell, she can come out right now. Hey, you're the Democratic nominee. You can come out right now and say, hey, I tried to do this, this, and this the last four years, and no one heard me. But now when I become president, this is what I'm going to do. You know you're going to have some people. If she says something like that, you're going to have people that are on the fence. They're going to jump to her side, whether she's telling the truth or not, just by saying stuff like that. But, you know, people in politics, they're not really on the street, not really grassroots. They don't really know how to handle certain situations or handle the people. Republicans have jumped on the criticism. Harris doesn't have any policy, doesn't have a policy page on her website. And the Trump campaign mockingly created Kamala2024policies.com, which outlines things like abolish borders and eliminate private health insurance. Harris allies considered criticism to be a double standard. Republicans have called on Trump to focus more on policy over personal jabs of Harris, but the former president has continued his personal attacks. But he has policies on his website. So it's like, he got time to do both, although he probably shouldn't take too many personal jazz. I mean, he probably should keep it political, but you got a whole website, got a whole website with policies on there, so he can go and he got time to do whatever he wanna do, right? The fact that there's even a conversation about this shows the double standards between Vice President Harris and Donald Trump. In just one month, Vice President Harris has run an impressive campaign of vision and substance. No, not really. You just got people that's just on identity politics where she has laid out her plans to build a middle class and fight for freedom. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Says Rachel Paul Palermo, former deputy Communi communications director and associate counsel to Harris in the white house. The vice president on Thursday will sit for her first interview since launching her presidential campaign. CNN's Dana Bash is sure to press her on hot button issues for immigrate from immigration to the economy in Gaza. You do also know that she'll be sitting with what's the dude name Spitz Spritz or whatever his name is, a guy that she's that's running with her for vice president. 
so she won't be by herself. And it's a recorded interview, so you know that, so you know it's gonna be edited like a sun gun. Harris also released proposals aimed to aimed at lowering costs earlier this month and touting them in remarks in Raleigh, North Carolina. Harris's housing plan calls for constructing three million new home new housing units, a tax incentive for home builders to construct starter homes, to set a first time home buyers and a $40 billion innovation fund for local governments to build housing. A lot of people not going to like that because because this plan, because it's funny. She's talking about building houses, but then you got states like California who passed these laws saying in Oregon who passed these bills saying that migrants could get anywhere from ten to $150,000 in assistance to purchase a home. And then you come and say, oh, we're going to start building 3 million homes. Come on now. Is it quite possible that they want all the migrants to move to the West Coast? And it's probably where they're going to start building all these houses. Do you think? Especially California, since California is going like belly up. Could be a way to, for California to start over. Do you think? Hmm. Her child care plan will restore and expand the child tax credit, which was introduced in the 2021 American Rescue Plan and expired that year. She would push to provide up to $3,600 per child in tax credits and call for providing up to $6,000 in tax relief for middle and low income families for the first year of their child's life. So $6,000, so you're pretty much promoting these single parents, these single mothers to have more babies because now they're going to get tax credit. And they're going to get child more child support. This has nothing to do with family, y'all. And she called for a federal ban on price. I wonder how come you couldn't do a bill like, hey, if you're married and got kids, we'll give you a price tax credit. I wonder why you can't do that. You can do everything else. She called for a federal ban on price gouging by pushing the Federal Trade Commission and state's attorney generals to investigate corporations that break such rules. And I did a story about that. And Kroger said, hey, the, 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 the profit margins are like, Three, one to three percent on every, on each, on all the products in the stores. So if they do any kind of price gouging, I mean, you would know. One of the main challenges in rolling out policy items comes down to pure timing, according to Democratic operatives, as the truncated time frame forces tough decisions for Harris and her team. You can talk about a federal ban on price gouging. You talk about a tax credit. You can talk about housing. You can talk about women's reproductive rights, but you can't talk about inflation. You can't talk about what can black people get? What can you do for black people? What you going to fight for for black people? You can't do none of that. They said, we don't have time for that S. One Democratic operative said about the idea of lengthy policy proposals. The reason you talk about policy is to bring the race back to values. And this race is about values now. So why distract? One of the quirks of, quirks of a 100-day-long campaign is that the Harris camp has the ability to be quite surgical about the policy proposals they put out there. They don't need to boil the ocean on the progressive wish list. The operative continue. They need to be very smart and deliberate about talking specifically about, are you saying specifically now about policy ideas that address voters top concerns, whether that bring down the cost of housing, cost of groceries, fixing the tax system. So it works for everyday working people and keeping healthcare affordable. Still Republicans have heaped criticism on Harris since the, convention ended for avoiding questions about how her policy stance have shifted since her 2020 presidential campaign. Amazing. Among those challenges are on Medicare for all and fracking two issues. Republicans are using to bludgeon her campaign. What well, to say that's one reason why she needs to address the American people and speak to these questions. Senator Tom Cotton, Republican, Arkansas, Cotton in Arkansas told ABCs this week on Sunday because the only basis they have to conclude what she will be like as president is what she's done for four years in this administration and what she said in her own voice in the last campaign. Former GOP presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy has called on Republicans to go harder at Harris on policy, focusing on her change on some issues like fracking. Which she, do, which she doesn't support a ban on after saying in 2019 that she does. GOP members also believe that they have policy on their side, especially on the economy and the border. Policy is your friend as how to win this race, Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican South Carolina, said on CNN. 
Nothing's going to change with Vice President Harris. Vice President Harris can't talk about what she's going to work on because she's already in office. If you think about it, if things are going to change, if she was going to be able to do something, you know, right now, things will be happening. Think about it. If Biden won't Kamala to have every advantage to become president, he could be like, look, here's what we're going to do. Or, 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 or the people, you know, the people that's actually run the government say this. Here's the issue we got. We got less. Well, that's the thing about it. You can't. Well, they, huh, I think they already said they want to come out and say she want to build a border wall, which, you know, was Trump's wall. And for the last four years, it was like, we don't want to do that. Matter of fact, we're going to we want to tear down what you already done built. Uh, what does she talk about? Like, say, the fracking. The, you know, first she said she didn't want to. She wanted to ban fracking. Now she don't want to ban fracking. So it seems like the things that she's trying to cape for are things that four or five years ago they wasn't with the Democrat because it was Donald Trump's idea. That's why. And now you're trying to keep Donald Trump out. You're like, hey, okay, now that Donald Trump's not in the office, this is what we're going to do. We're going to destroy what he did, and then we're going to bring it back. Make that crap make sense. But anyway, like I said, it ain't much, ain't much Kamala Harris can say right now. But like I say, if the people in the Biden campaign would be like, hey, let's just say the border wall. Let's just go ahead and start building the wall. Let's say, hey, we, we're going to do it as executive order. And we're gonna build a wall. They gonna they say now that it's not a lot of migrants coming in like it used to be, but that could be a lot. But it ain't coming through Texas, and that was due to the the work of the great Greg Abbott, Governor Greg Abbott, because that dude said we finna shut all this stuff down, and we're gonna open up two ports, and this is the way you are gonna come through. If you are dumb enough to try to cross some ways, raise a wire on the river, and you get caught, your buddy to sit there. Or have your Mexican officials come get you. Because we're not touching. Because we done told you to stay from over. You might think, ah, that's kind of evil and mean. But no. People got to be held accountable for their actions. Legal or illegal. But yeah. Yeah. Kamala Harris need to come with policies. Because she can sit there and say. They can sit there and act like that. She don't need to. But yeah, you need to. Because a lot of us waiting on them. And if you ain't got no policy, what the hell am I voting for you? Because that's the purpose. Not no, not no broad promises. Is I'm going to keep maintain democracy not only work on an emotional level that don't work on a practical level and that's what i'm on we are on practicality right now but anyway tell me what you think about this story leave your comments below share with the world let's doc let's dialogue like you know how we do uh, hey don't forget to like share comment and subscribe those four things mean the world to us but it only cost you maybe a couple of minutes out your day now, if you would like to support financially, you can go to the description box. There are links there you can click on, or you can give super thanks or super chats. However you support, monetarily or not, we appreciate it and we thank you for everything. And don't forget, go to MarlonMorale.com. That's MarlonMorale.com. There's 10% off your first purchase. We can get perfumes, silk scarves, silk do-rags, beard kits, hanging bags, uh, handbags for the ladies, and much more, all with high quality products. Promise that you and your loved ones will not be disappointed. That's MarlonMorale.com. And with that being said, I leave you in peace and I'll see you on the other side.